Well, folks, I have to give Ben Shapiro credit. A little bit of credit, but nonetheless credit, because he did something that I think is admittedly very difficult to do. He called out one of his own colleagues for doing something that I think is reprehensible. So as you'll recall, Candace Owens, she defended Kanye West after he made his disgustingly anti-Semitic tweet saying he's going to go to death con three against Jewish people. Now, before we get to Ben Shapiro's remarks, let me remind you what Candace Owens said. If you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that, right? If you're an honest person, when you read this tweet, you had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. It's like you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way that you're not allowed to say black anymore. In the same way that if you talk about the struggles of black Americans and you talk about the people in black America, like Patrice Cullors, the founder of Black Lives Matter, who are harnessing emotions to enrich their pockets, right? Yeah, so you already know how I feel about what she said because we talked about this on Monday, but this is what Ben Shapiro said, and to his credit, he calls her flat out dead wrong for what she said there. Listen, on a personal level, I get Candace defending her friend. She's very close with Kanye West. I get it. I don't think that her defense of Kanye is correct or convincing. I, I think that the, the real answer to the Kanye West of it is Kanye is a bipolar human being. I mean, he's made this very clear. I talked about this on the show. And bipolar people tend to say extraordinarily bizarre things and ugly things. And again, that doesn't excuse the bizarreness or the ugliness of the actual remarks, which as I will say once again for the 1000th time are in fact anti-Semitic. But there's a difference between somebody cohesively saying what Kanye West said and Kanye West saying things in broken grammar in the midst of what appears to be a bizarre period of his life in which he is presenting Adidas executives with porn in front of their face. And I'm not gonna treat that the same as Ilhan Omar saying openly anti-Semitic stuff as an elected congressperson in the United States of America. So when it comes to Candace, I mean, look, am I still friends? With, of course, I'm friendly with Candace. Am I friendly with Tucker Carlson? I mean, Tucker cut a segment from his interview with Kanye, in which Kanye said a bunch of anti-Semitic stuff. Listen, am I friends with Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan had on Roger Waters the other day. Roger Waters is a ridiculous anti-Semitic jerk. I mean, like, wide varieties of disagreement happen in this space. Bottom line is, when it comes to Kanye's remarks, undoubtedly anti-Semitic remarks, when it comes to Candace's defense of those remarks, I think Candace is dead wrong on what she said while respecting her relationship with Kanye. She knows Kanye better than I do. She knows his motive. Okay, whatever. All of that I'm, I'm sure is true and I will take that for granted. What she said about Kanye, I radically disagree with. I think that she is dead wrong. I think that it is, it, it, it is not a, a, it betrays a, a lack of understanding about anti-Semitism and, and the scope of anti-Semitism but we're allowed to have those disagreements. That's the way this works. All right, so listen, I have a lot of disagreements with Ben Shapiro. I think that he overall is very disingenuous. I think that he presents statistics and data in very dis disingenuous ways. Having said that though, one thing that I have to give him credit for aside from this is the fact that he is much more honest than other right-wing propagandists. I still think that he is dishonest and I think that he, he has this goal to ultimately serve as a tool for the Republican propaganda machine, but he still goes the extra step to at least try to be more reasonable. He's not explicitly anti-vax. We can't even say that about people who still purport to be on the left like Jimmy Dore. He condemned Trump when he was claiming that the election was stolen. And now he's calling out a colleague. Look, you have to give him credit for this. Was he using kid gloves? Of course he was. But to still call out your colleague and say that she was dead wrong, I think that that takes courage. And I'm not taking that away from Ben Shapiro. I think that he absolutely has earned a little teeny tiny bit of respect from me. And the reason why I talk about Ben Shapiro so much on this program is because he has a lot of influence with the younger generation, Zoomers, 
They tune in, they see his argument, it gets recommended to them either through an advertisement or through the YouTube algorithm or TikTok algorithm, and he has a lot of influence. So I try to debunk his arguments because he is seemingly an intellectual because of the way that he speaks. Speaking fast apparently means that uh, you're smart. So aesthetically, he has this veneer of, a, of an intellectual, and I think that he's absolutely influential. Unlike a lot of other people, I think he's a very effective propagandist. I wouldn't say that he's as effective as Tucker Carlson, but nonetheless, he's very influential. So this is why, you know, a lot of folks on the left like myself focus on him. But having said that, though, I recognize that he is probably the less dangerous of all the right-wing propagandists, even if what he says is deeply deeply troubling sometimes. Now, I do, of course, take issue with elements of his argument there. I think that conflating Ilhan Omar quoting a song all about the Benjamins to Kanye West saying he's going to go to uh, Death Con 3 against Jewish people and even saying that what Ilhan said is worse because Kanye West is bipolar, I take issue with that. I mean, he, to his, to his credit, he didn't say that you get a pass because you're bipolar. There are, again, millions of bipolar Americans who don't, don't say terrible things like Kanye West. Yes, there are uh, things that bipolar people perhaps say that they wouldn't necessarily say otherwise during manic episodes. I, again, like I have a family member who's bipolar. I know people who are bipolar. But Kanye West, he gets this pass that normal working class bipolar people don't get. So I think that when you have that much influence, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you a pass, especially when you are punching down on a marginalized community. Anti-Semitism has been on the rise in the United States, and I think that this is a serious issue, and I'm glad that Ben Shapiro agrees with me and acknowledges that. I just wish that he would extend that sympathy for Jewish people to other marginalized people, like trans people and LGBTQ plus people, but you can't win them all, and in this instance, at least he is speaking out against the anti-Semitism of his own colleagues. Now, it gets worse for Candace Owens because since she made that defense of Kanye West, we learned even more about him that leads us to believe that he's an anti-Semitic scumbag. For example, we all saw unaired footage from his interview with Tucker Carlson where he said even more bigoted statements. We also learned that former TMZ employee Jonathan Lathan Jr. claims that Kanye reportedly, quote, said something like, I love Hitler, I love Nazis, something to that effect, according to Lathan. And... It's honestly not that surprising. In fact, just a couple of days ago, Charlemagne said this about Kanye West. Like Kanye West woke up and just chose to be a Nazi one day. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out and tells you how much he loves Hitler. So if Ben Shapiro can call out Candace Owens, a friend, why can't Candace Owens call out Kanye West? also a friend. It speaks to her character, and I think that the reason why she's not explicitly condemning his anti-Semitism is because Candace Owens herself may be anti-Semitic. Now, this is what she said about Hitler. Like, I'm just going to put this out there. This was her reaction to her comments about Hitler when Ted Lieu shared it after she was uh, brought in to testify before uh, Congress. I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned. Um, by uh, elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German. Yeah, so I'm not going to be that surprised that someone like that won't condemn even explicit anti-Semitism when she said something like that, that disgusting and grotesque. So Ben Shapiro, he gets credit, but I've got to push back a little bit against what he said here besides the Ilhan Omar uh, thing. So he allows people on his platform that are disgusting. Matt Walsh is probably the most odious figure in all of right-wing media, with the exception of maybe Tucker Carlson. This is a stochastic terrorist who self-identifies as a theocratic fascist, meaning that he wants to take away religious liberty from anyone who isn't a Christian, and he wants an authoritarian regime. These are things that Ben Shapiro is against. And you can disagree with people. You know, I have political disagreements with family members, but that's not just a political disagreement. It's much more than that. It's deeply bigoted against folks like Ben Shapiro. So the fact that he lets people like that on his platform, people who say disgusting anti-Semitic things like Candace Owens on his platform, but yet 
will take any little thing that Rashida Tlaib, a Palestinian woman, or Ilhan Omar says, and nitpick and claim that it's anti-Semitic. It shows you that he does have a double standard, but once in a while he is willing to, uh, I guess, call them out when they go a little bit too far. So I wish that there was more consistency from Ben Shapiro on this issue. I know that he knows that what his colleagues do and say is really fucked up. It's just a matter of why only is he now choosing to call out Con uh, Candace Owens. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm glad that he called her out, but I wish that he would do this more frequently. If he did, I would have much more respect for him. But again, we're talking about a right-wing propagandist, so the standards are already very, very low. But either way, I don't want to detract from what he did here because, again, I think that this is really important. It takes a lot of courage to call out your friend publicly. So for him to say that she was dead wrong, I respect that and I commend him for what he did. I don't say this often, so soak it in, Ben Shapiro. Good job. Wet, 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 wet,